Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, church. Praise the Lord. Thank you for coming this morning. I believe that you are in the right place at the right time. Hallelujah. Allow me once again to introduce my beloved wife, Maudan Kurumunji, with whom I have come. It's a great joy for us as a big team from Uganda, the Diocese of Kigezi. We are so joyful that we are here in, in Rwanda and especially in the province, the Anglican province of Rwanda. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! As I told you, we are a big team headed by our beloved bishop of the Diocese of Kigesi, the right reverend Gada Kanjuna and his wife. We purpose to come to this province because we felt that there was something that we needed to tap and to learn from you. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! <laughs> We want to praise God for the journey masses that God has gave us right from Kawale through Katuna up to Chigari. We want to praise God for the hospitality that has been accorded to us. And we are greatly amazed by the hospitality and the love from your Archbishop. We are so humbled by his reception and love, and we can't take that for granted. We want to thank God for the other bishops who participated with us in the retreat. The Bishop of uh, St. Etienne Diocese, uh, the Right Reverend Bishop Amot, and uh, the Bishop of Shira Diocese and their wives. They blessed us in the retreat and we want to appreciate them and thank God for the wonderful ministry they are doing here. Together with their co-workers, our beloved in the Lord, Reverend Emmanuel and his other team, we want to appreciate them. Church, may I invite you to appreciate them with us for their rousing and warm welcome. Uganda, and particularly the Diocese of Kigezi, has a lot in common, has a lot in common with these dioceses and the province of the Church of Rwanda. Because it, this diocese, the diocese from which we come, neighbor, neighbors with the Republic of Rwanda. And so there is a lot, a lot that we share. Personally, my name is Nkuru Nunji. Nkuru Nunji. It is Nkuru Nziza. Nkuru Nziza. <laughs> Nkuru Nunji, Nkuru Nziza. Actually, my mother comes from here. <laughs> no, no, not my mother, my grandmother. My paternal grandmother is from Rwanda. And uh, we actually live near Rwanda, the boundary with Rwanda and the, this, um, um, this Chisoro, it's called the, this uh, uh, near Butaro, that, the, those, those areas, those who know those places. So we are bound, we bound, our boundary is close. So I have, I was born on the border, I grew on the border, so you can imagine we have a lot in common. So, our coming here, us and you, we share a common heritage. Most of us have common blood, as you can see. We want to thank God. But above all, there is something very, very special 
that binds us together more than anything else. The Church of Uganda, and particularly the Dice of Kigezi, we have a common heritage of the East African revival. Alleluia! Which was birthed here at Gahini. Alleluia! <laughs> Alleluia! And actually, from Gahini, the fire of revival in Uganda, the fire that was caught here in Rwanda moved before getting to other parts of Uganda, it started in our diocese, in the Diocese of Kigezi. Hallelujah! <laughs> in the 1935, the East African Revival, which was birthed here at Gahini, that's the biggest Christian commonality that we have with you. And we want to thank God, we want to give glory to God. And uh, in spite of the long journey that we have gone, the people here and the people of Uganda, of course, who have gone through so many ups and downs, the political upheavals and the social evolutions and whatever. But what I can say is that all through the times, God has been faithful. Hallelujah. God has been faithful faithful and particularly for us as a diocese the people of Kiges we really treasure revival the outpowering of the Holy Spirit that through the Holy Spirit people were convicted of their sins and the people would repent their sins openly in the churches and the word of God was planted and it revolutionized the life of the people we want to give glory to God as a church from where we come we are what we are because of the effects of revival movement that was birthed here in Rwanda at the Gahini. So, our coming here is not by accident. We are coming, we are going to a place where we feel and where we believe there is spiritual tapping. Live alone whatever could have happened, but we believe the Spirit of God, the power of God, the kind of God and the writing of God is still fresh and we want to give glory to God I want to thank God because even when I speak of the glories of the revival I would gladly say I am one of the products because in 1986 I committed my life <laughs> To Jesus as a young man newly married the Lord convicted me that I needed to repent of my sins I repented of fornication I repented of of anger I repented and I committed fully committed my life to Jesus and since that very time God has made a difference in my life that later on I was called into ministry in which I have been for many years now I'm about retirement but I have no, re no regrets my joy and pride is not necessary in the clothes that I'm putting on as a canon in the church but that joy in a joy that I, ref uh, that I received upon committing my life to Jesus and confessing my sins. We want to thank God, you Christians of uh, Chiporoso here, St. Peter's. We want to give glory to God for you, you people of God. We are warmly received. We have been able to move around 
and see by our own eyes. We give glory to God for what is happening here. We give glory to God for what God is doing through you here in the church. We have seen how the hand of God has kept on upon each one of you and this church. In a few years, how you are growing, how you are steadily progressing, and we cannot take that for granted. It takes God to see the things that are happening. Things like these cannot just happen. We want to thank God for the leaders of the church here. We want to praise God. There is one of the most beautiful verses I love in Jeremiah Jeremiah chapter 17 verse 7 Blessed is the man whose trust is the Lord and whose confidence is the Lord He is like a tree planted by water that sends out its roots by the stream and does not fear when heat comes for its leaves remain green in the year of drought It is not anxious for it does not fail to yield fruit. Hallelujah. Planted. Firmly planted in the Lord. Firmly planted in the Lord. When we are moving around and sharing with your leaders about what, how God is moving through and through and through this church. The strides in, a, in a development, the spiritual growth that is going on, one would easily wonder why. One would easily wonder why. My brothers and sisters seated before me, things of God don't just happen. What is all this motivation? That makes all these things happen. There is somebody behind the curtains. And to me I feel it is the God you believe. And in whom you have invested. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We want to thank God for faithful stewardship of your leaders. We don't take that for granted. And the trust that you have for them working together and building together for God, seeing the growth that is happening, we want to give glory to God for what is happening here. When you move around, One of the other things you have been praising for is that you have been good stewards of God's creation. Good stewards of God's creation. When you move around your city, you can see the beauty of God. The radiance of God's beauty. And it is not God, it is God through you that you are able to take care of what God has created. Creation care around yourself. We want to give glory to God. A thunderous clap to God. A thunderous clap to God. A thunderous clap to God. Perhaps there are some of the things as we see and learn that we take back home. We want to appreciate you and thank God for you. But as this city grows, you can see that there is rapid growth. 
urbanization. And this is very good and we want to appreciate God for all this. In Romans, the letter of Paul to Romans, chapter 12, verse 2, he says, Romans, turn with me to Romans. The letter of Paul to the Romans, chapter 12, The letter of Paul to the Romans, chapter 12, verse 2. It says, And do not conform to the present world system, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, so as to sense for yourselves what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. When things are getting on well, sometimes the devil is not happy. A church, when things are getting well, the devil is never happy. And when Paul was writing to the Romans, a young church, a church that was living in a city where things were getting better, he realized that there would be a problem. The problem of conforming to the standards of the world. As the Anglican church here, our plea to you is as the city grows and as the world systems come by, as Christians, we must be very watchful. Lest we conform and we lose. Hallelujah. There are many things which come around us and we want to look like the world. We want to speak like the world. We want to walk like the world. And as Christians, if we are not careful, we can easily be swallowed up by the world. My plea to you, my brothers and sisters here, is that as Christians, let us walk our heads raised up. Let us make sure that we don't lose our identity as Christians. Amid the changes that come by, the socioeconomic changes that come around us, let us remain true to the Christian standards. Be yourselves as Christians. In, 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 the, in our Western, in, in, in actual, in a, in Kawari, in Uganda, in the western part, there are, uh, they are saying that, there are, there are sayings that when, you, when you want to walk the way, you may look at somebody, maybe somebody had a problem, and maybe as he walks, he does like this. But for you, you think it is a good, it's a fashion, and you begin walking that way. Many, many times, we have a very big challenge. We want to see what is happening elsewhere, and we want simply to copy. Hallelujah. As Christians, my brothers and sisters, let us learn to live the Christian way. Let us learn to live the Christ, Christian, way, Christian way. Let us learn to live within our means. Let's do what we can. World over people want to become rich overnight and it has caused problems over nations. As Christians, let us learn to live within our means. Let us learn to be trustworthy in whatever we are doing in our homes at the workplace. Let the world see us. And when they see us, they should see Jesus and God in us, shining in and through us. And they will give glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So it's my joy to be here this morning. The first reading that was read to us from Deuteronomy God was cautioning the Israelites that as they get into the promised land, they should never forget. They should remain true to their living God. And in 2 Timothy, the letter of Paul to 2 Timothy, Paul is cautioning Timothy and the young church that the end times will have a lot of trouble with it. Some people think the end times have already come because so many things are happening, so many things all over the world. But as Christians, we are called upon to be watchful 
and to remain steadfast to God, to Jesus, whom we have believed. Hallelujah. We are co-workers with God, and God has called us, has called us to reflect his image. To reflect his image. And as Christians, as I come towards the end, let us be ourselves. Let us never want to pretend. God wants us to be who we are. When we come to God, God does not want to address you. He wants to address you the way you are. Each one of us is unique. There is none of us who is exactly a duplicate of the other. And that is the beauty of God. And so God wants us the way we are. And when we are before God, let us remove our masks. Let us be open to God and tell him what we are, our needs, because he has it all. He is our comforter. He is our provider. He knows the future. He knows all of it. And when we come to God, and the biggest challenge we have in the world as Christians is the spirit of pretense. We want to be what we are not before God, and yet God knows us in and out. As Christians here of the church, as we serve God, let us serve him in faithfulness. Let us be open to God, because God, the surgeon, Come to him the way you are. Many, many times we want to hide. Waza, if you go to a doctor and the doctor says, where is it paining? Sometimes you may have an illness which covers the entire body, almost every body. But there are times when you can feel where there is pain. Jesus today, as you come before him, he says, where is your pain? And he wants to address it. I want to thank God because he is faithful. He takes care of our needs. He cares for us. And when you take the decision to follow Jesus, to invest in him, that's the best decision you can ever make. The best decision I think I have ever made in the world is the very day I committed my life to Jesus. I have never been the same. I'm very, very, as we go back to Uganda, I will say the hand of God is here. Our prayer is that love Jesus, invest Him, all your lives, He will prosper you. Father, we thank you because you are God. You are a God of history. The God of Abraham, the God of Moses. You are faithful to them during the time of the wilderness. In times of trouble, you came to their rescue. You are the same God in our midst. A God who has seen this country through very bad times, we can see your hand. This church, this country, rising to greater heights of prosperity. We pray that you will continue to reign, reign the hearts of men and women for your glory. In the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Thank you very much.